Greetings, and welcome to the Prometheus Project Podcast. I'm your host, Richard Bist. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of creativity. For this episode, episode 35, I want to talk a little bit about empathy, and specifically how it correlates to fiction writing. However, you may find that some of the points I cover can relate to other forms of art as well. I think it will depend on how you interpret these points and how you apply them to your own creativity. Of all the skills needed to be a competent fiction writer, I think empathy is one of the most important. Empathy, if you aren't already aware, is the ability to understand and relate to what other people are going through. For example, if you see someone crying at a funeral and that, in turn, makes you cry because you understand their pain and loss, well, that's empathy. But it doesn't necessarily have to come from sadness. I mean, laughter can be contagious. Humor is an emotion that can be shared. And obviously the same with love. You know, seeing a young couple in love, holding hands, the longing gaze into each other's eyes, the knowing smiles. Well, that always makes me smile. Makes me feel warm inside. You know, seeing them sitting together in a booth in a restaurant or walking down the sidewalk, it's heartwarming. And it makes me remember those heady days of young love. Or lust. Or maybe a little of both. (laughs) But I'm sure you can relate. You've seen those couples. You've felt that glow of their love for one another. What often gets me is the proposal. Seeing those looks of surprise someone when someone proposes to their girlfriend or their boyfriend, well, it, it's special, and I share that happiness. Of course, I've also been accused of being overly empathetic, and yeah, I'm probably guilty as charged. You know, I've, I do I feel the pain of others along with the joy and excitement, and I believe that this empathy, this ability to understand and relate to the emotions and feelings of others, It helps me in my fiction writing. Why, do you ask? (laughs) Because I can put myself in their shoes, so so to speak. I mean, I can get inside the heads of my characters and better understand their motivations, their reasoning. I'm a believer that context is everything, both in fiction and in life. And being empathetic helps to understand context. So what do I mean by context? That, my friend, is a very good question. Consider this for a moment. We want our characters to be believable, to be real, right? We want our readers to feel as if the people on the page have real lives. We want them to sympathize, to empathize with them. If our characters are real, then the story becomes real. But oftentimes I think we, the authors, can forget that. We end up writing characters that are maybe, I don't know, too perfect. Like always making the right decisions or doing the right things. Or maybe too evil, like they never turn it off. But that's not really realistic, is it? Real people are nuanced. We can make good decisions, we can make bad decisions. Sometimes because we don't have all the information we need, or maybe because we're driven by emotion. Or to go even deeper, maybe things in our past or personal experiences can affect the way we think and react in certain situations. That's the context I mentioned a moment ago. Context is sort of the the background that affects the foreground. Or to put it another way, it's the history that affects the present and possibly the future. And here's a quick example. Say you've been through a few really bad relationships and breakups. Messy ones. Tears, heartbreak, arguments over who gets to keep the dog. Yeah, it's sad, but it happens. Now... With two or three of those in your history, think about the next relationship you end up in. Don't you think your previous past experience is going to affect how you act and react in the next relationship? I mean, maybe not on purpose, obviously, but still, you have scars from your past, and they're going to affect you whether you realize it or not. So now apply this same scenario to a character in one of your stories. You can allude to the fact this character, let's, let's call him Bob, has been through a couple of bad relationships, maybe even a bad marriage. So now Bob is jaded. And you know what? Readers are going to sympathize with him because pretty much everyone has been through a bad breakup. That's where the empathy comes in. They can relate to Bob's situation because they've been there. And now they understand his background, the context. They will better understand why he's acting like a jerk to his new girlfriend or boyfriend. I mean, whatever makes Bob happy. 
But do you see what I'm getting at? Bob is going to make a few bad decisions with his new partner. Without the context, the reader won't necessarily understand why Bob is acting the way he is. But with maybe a little glimpse into his past, they can connect the dots and realize that Bob is acting out because of his history. The scars are there. Maybe they haven't completely healed. And now he's screwing up a new relationship based on his past. The key here is that we get the reader to feel for the character or the characters. And in order to do that, we have to provide at least a little bit of context. Here's another way to look at it. We're all the main characters, the protagonist, in our own personal stories, right? That's our lives in a nutshell. And everyone else, all the people around us, like friends and family and lovers, they're all the supporting players in our personal story. But despite that, you still know these people. You probably grew up with some of the family around you, and you know their backgrounds, their histories. Same with your close friends, be it one person or a dozen. You've hung out, done things together, and so there's history. So when they do something, make a decision, or act a certain way, in the back of your mind, you know why. That's who they are. That's what you expect from them. Like if one of them loses their temper over something, you think, oh, that's just how Bob gets when his spaghetti is cold. And you may even know that when he was a kid, he was so poor he ate nothing but cold spaghetti. So, hey, context, right? I know that's kind of a silly example, but I think you get my point. Readers will respond to characters they can relate to. But don't misunderstand this. I'm not saying they have to completely relate to the character or characters. What we want to do is get them to relate to how the character feels, how they think, how they react. I mean, we've all had bad days. Maybe we woke up late and that threw our whole day off. If that happens in real life, then hey, it can happen in a work of fiction. The secret, if you want to call it that, is finding ways to make our characters real and believable. And if we can do that, then the readers will relate. That's why I was talking about giving reasons for the actions and reactions. Just a little context can explain things to the reader, give them that, oh, I see, kind of moment. Personally, I can get annoyed when a character in a book or a story I'm reading does something stupid or completely out of the blue. If there's no context, then I don't understand their reasoning, and I, if I don't understand it, then I can't necessarily empathize with them. And the reasoning doesn't have to happen then and there. It can be something that can be explained later. The point is to provide that context at some point. Even if it happens later in the story, I'll still nod my head and think to myself, oh, I get it, now that makes sense. I prefer that to just random acts that don't have a basis behind them. I mean, I, I hope this has made some sort of sense to you. I mean, empathy is important, not just in fiction, but also in real life. I mean, we have to be able to feel for others to understand where people are coming from. That's something I try to keep in mind as I go about my daily routines. Like when I run into somebody at work who's acting pissy and un unpleasant, when they usually aren't that way, I try to keep in mind that maybe, hey, something must have happened in their personal life that morning that ruined their day. They aren't necessarily mad at me, just angry in general. So in this case, I'm providing the context in this situation. It makes my own life a little more manageable when I remind myself that other people have their own issues too. So try and keep empathy in mind when you write, and as you go about your day. I think it'll make a positive difference in both areas. And one final thought before the show close out. Do you think that empathy can play a part in other forms of art? Can it affect, I don't know, painting, music, sculpture, photography? I think it's something to consider. Now, if you have thoughts on this, please, you know, let me know. Now, for the show closeout. I'm going to stick with the empathy theme here. As I recently mentioned in a post on my blog, there seems to be a, a lack of empathy in the world at the moment. I mean, there are a lot of good people doing a lot of good things out there. But there seems to be far more people who simply don't care about others, who are so wrapped up in their own little worlds that they they can't see what's going on around them. And, and please, I'm not trying to get political. I'm focusing on plain human decency. As an example, we have people protesting in support of Black Lives Black Lives Matter movement here in, in the U.S., which is absolutely wonderful. However, we also have people threatening violence against the protesters just because they don't agree with them. And 
I can't get my head around that kind of thinking. The only reasoning I can come up with is it's a lack of empathy. What I mean is some people can't understand what the protests are about because they've never had to experience what black folk in the U.S. have had to deal with. To hopefully better clarify what I mean, think of it this way. A rich person looks at a poor person and doesn't understand why they're poor. The rich person has grown up rich in a rich family. He has no experience being poor. So when he sees a poor person, all he can do is wonder, why doesn't this guy just work harder? That's a lack of empathy. He can't put himself into the poor man's shoes. He can't comprehend. I think that's one of the main reasons, main causes of societal conflict right now. Not being able to understand where the other person is coming from. So, for this show, instead of challenging you to do something creative, all I'd like you to do is consider empathy for a few minutes. Think about other people, not just friends and family, but people who, I don't know, live next door to you, the mailman, the person who rang up your groceries at the store. Think about what they must have going on in their lives. From a writer's perspective, think of it as turning the focus away from the main character, you, and shining the spotlight on the supporting cast, the everyday, ordinary people you encounter. Also, Try to keep in mind that everyone has their own set of problems. They are all fucked up in their own unique way. We all are. Just because someone didn't say thank you when you held the door for them doesn't mean that they're rude. They may have just lost their job or they're trying to get over a bad breakup. We never know what's going on in another person's life. And conversely, they don't know what's going on in yours. Empathy, it's akin to compassion. The world so desperately needs that at the moment. Please, please give it some some thought soon. It may help you to better understand someone else's point of view, maybe even change your perspective on your everyday interactions. I hope it does. And my apologies for veering off onto a personal aside like this, but I feel it's something important that needs to be addressed. So with that said, I hope you got something positive out of this episode. If so, hey, please let me know. You can reach me on my website, richardbiss.com, or catch me on social media. Also, hey, check out my cooking videos on my YouTube channel. I stick with the creativity theme, and I share recipes that are simple, fun, and they allow you to customize, so you can be creative. Plus, hey, I occasionally screw up, so that's always fun, too. (laughs) Until next time, please stay safe, be kind, and do something creative. Cheers.